the FBC Base project is my own kind of development board. Most other development boards has pin headers, which make sense since they're meant to be used with breadboards. I went to the development board that is mostly used not with a breadboard, but more like a, an experimental product. I wanted to use FPC cables and connectors instead. That way, I would get a lot more cleaner and a simpler way of making different things. Without my wife complaining that my electronics projects would look like a homemade bob or something. I have divided it into three main parts. The power supply board, the MCU board, and the utility board. However, sometimes even I use breadboards, and because of that, I have made these breadboard adapters. It even has unsymmetric contact points, so my clumsy hands don't short to tracks when I'm sticking down my measurement probes. If I wanted to use the same microcontroller board for several projects, then I could only have the microcontroller on one of the boards, and that alone. Most other development boards do not do this, so they do not have the option to optimize the power supply for running on batteries or a 5 volt USB constant power. These two things can require quite the different types of power supply. The top board is usually what defines the entire thing's name or task. Attach sensor on the board and it's a sensor board. Attach stepper drivers and it's a stepper board. Yeah, you probably get it by now. Being easy to manufacture was one of the most important design goals. With all components on one side and also diversified everything into three different boards. A previous design used FPC connectors with one millimeter pin distance, but the FPC connectors did not have contact sides on both the top and the bottom of the connector. That meant that you had to use cables with the right orientation, which limits the amount of FPC cables that you can use a lot. I was hesitant to switch to FPC connectors that had both top and bottom contact points because they were 0.5 millimeter pin distance, which is a lot harder to manufacture. But that problem was solved by the creation of the semi-automatic solar stencil printer. I have a video about that, which you can see later, which is linked down in the description. It has a bit of a weird shape in order to be able to run cables on the side of the PCBs without them running outside the PCB itself. This makes it easy to make casings for it because it's meant to be a development board that really doesn't look like a homemade bomb but something you can actually have in your living room. Here are some of many other boards I have made. Budget friendly temperature sensor board, crypto chip board, general input and output board, IR learner board with also an IR LED sender, 5 MOSFET board, and a 4.5 to 35 volt power input board. I have 3D printed these 
plastic spacers. They are made so that they have a hole through them. So you can put them through the screw holes and then you can stack them on top of each other. But if you want, you can also screw it down to your casing or wherever you want to screw it down to with some uh, M2 and a half screws because they fit right through the spacers. If you join my Patreon, you will get access to all of the design files so you can order the PCBs and the components from your favorite PCB manufacturer and make your own. If you like this kind of content, please consider becoming a subscriber to my YouTube channel.